Shelton with the ball on his own there. Two to chance now for James Williams. That's in the hands of Danny Mooney in that field goal. And that field will come away with this one. Give you a quick check of James in that field. Has the possession of his own 21 metre line. It's Johnny Mooney in goal. It's full back line of Jack Hennessy, Audrey Powell, and Shane Oregon. Half, half back line, half a tree, half in the field. Larry O'Reilly is going to put Paul Roy just before the score. And Adam Shannon breaks up the half back line for that field. The field is Matthew Morrison, Tom Shannon, and Gaggy coming away with the ball once more. Half forward, uh, Patrick Wilmot, Owen O'Donnell, Barry Gilmer, Barry Gilmer. Two forward line, Andrew Roy, Keith Short, and Ossia Lee. Galbury in possession just outside the Rocky and 45, all the way back down. Galbury looks to make it again. It's coming with the ball in the shooting opportunity here for Galbury. Could be the first point of the game. A decent effort for Owen O'Donnell. And then the final score will go to the series. Yeah, I'm still going to the series there, John. And Jamie was. Dropped in shot the first one. He certainly made no mistake. This guy is he's a very good young footballer. And he played him quite a little call in the half back line. But they have been moving forward this year. And uh, he's one of those players that's adapted to the league. As you can see that, the second one is going to be a good one. He was in the second one.
here. Charton lines this one up. And Charton has leveled things here, Matt. Five and a half minutes gone, a point apiece. Yeah, um, you're right. You flagged it. it. It was a difficult enough kick, particularly for a right-footed kicker. Um, it should be meat and drink if he was a left-footed kicker. But he, he made it his own. Only just, mind you, from what we could could see here. But 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 it's a leveller, and Keane Shorten is that kind of player that that he will punish those to, from those kind of distances and even from further out. That's a great catch by John Kearns. These are was John Kearns coming out from full forward to take that catch, and when the mark is James Ryan now moving the ball forward for Galbally. Galbally in possession now comes all the way back to Liam Casey as Galbally look to build up an attack here. Into Jamie Morrissey, who scored their only point of the game thus far. Morrissey now holding on to the ball, holding on to possession. Eventually leaves it off to Michael Donovan. And Donovan now looking to take on a couple of players. He beats Barry Coleman with ease. And it's Donovan, very hard man to catch when he gets going. It's a certain foul. The referee, Jason Mullins, doesn't give a foul. Strange one in my eyes anyway. But it's Raquel leader way coming away with the ball. And now it's Patrick Sheen, their captain. He leaves the ball off to Podrick Power and Power. As um, Andrew White here, all on his own over on the far side here in the Gaelic grounds. Six, nearly seven minutes gone here of this intermediate football championship final. That's one point apiece between Raquel and Galvez. Raquel on the attack now with Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell gives the ball inside to one of his full forward members, but in that occasion it was Owen Kelly. He leaves it off to O'Grady. Darrow O'Grady back to Kelly and indeed back inside to Owen O'Donnell once more. O'Donnell now with the luminous orange boots manages to find it away to O'Grady. And then again back to Andrew White. White 45 metres from the Galbally goal. Leaves the ball off to Barry Coleman. Coleman with one into Short and Short and had it. Then he lost it. But still a chance for Raquel to come away with the ball with Mikey Marcy. And Marcy does well to even have any chance of winning that ball and give it the ball back to Patrick Sheehan, Sheehan inside to Shorten, Shorten looking to fashion a shooting opportunity, that's on his left foot, it's his weaker of the two feet, it's tailed, ne- set it out far from the left hand post, didn't come back enough Matt but we're going to have a free, Shorten was fouled before for a tug back and Matt another chance for Keane Shorten, another good build up for Raquel on several occasions did well to keep that move going. Yeah, you were saying there just, just to um, roll back a small bit um, about the foul um, or what we perceived from here to be a foul on, on, on Mike Donovan. I think in defence of the referee, he was very near the scene of the action and he saw exactly what happened. Now, this is, 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 is um, slightly more difficult in that it's further out and again he's taking with the right foot and it got there. He got it. I think he got it more convincingly actually than the last one but, but Raquel prepared to be patient now they have a fairly stiff breeze against them now this is something that Galbley playing against the breeze in the first half may be well prepared for because you will recall in the semi-final with Palace Green there was a storm and Galbley played it against, against it in the first half and turned over just a point down and I think they probably surprised them um, uh, probably surprised uh, Palace on that particular night because they did not retreat into a defensive shell as you would expect to, to, to defend um, against the breeze. They, they, they actually took the game to Palace Green. Now they're not doing it to the same extent yet tonight but of course they're, they're not being allowed to do so but the breeze, the breeze is not as strong but you have to admire the patience of, of, of um, of Raquel and their building, build up and the way they're moving it through the hands. And I suppose a lot of that is credit to Killian Fair, who, who, whose reputation as a coach is, is rapidly growing. And, and like, this man has, has, has seen it all, like he, back in his native cavern through London and in, more recently with Drum, Drum Bradford. And he, he has won county, medal, county singer medals with Cavan Gales, with St. Brendan's in London, and more recently with Drum Bradford. A very, very experienced performer, very, and um, a really, really fastly rising coach. It's um, two points to one here to Raquel after nearly 10 minutes of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final. There's Galbley on the attack once more as James, James Cummins in possession again. He leaves the ball off in front of him. The corner forward, Jerk Quinlan. And Quinlan now looking to fashion a shooting chance. That's going to tail to the left and wide. As Matt was just saying, we're going to have um, a blood sub on here for Raquel. Is there Captain Patrick Sheen who's been forced off, as you may have seen a couple of moments ago? And on for him is Dean Moan. Dean wearing number 16. But it's going to be a, a, a Raquel kick out now with Johnny Mooney to take. 
Patrick Wilmot in front of us moving, making good movement for him but it's a straight kick out and it's going to be more possession here for Rakil who started this game very brightly out to Darrow Grady now and so Grady gives it back inside to Wilmot Wilmot who's in a lot of the ball in these early stages early opening 10 minutes leaves the ball off to Ono Donalds Wilmot makes himself a bail again he's going to be fouled foul is committed there by David Custon he's going to get a word in the ear from Jason Mullins it's only a short word but it's going to be another chance Matt O'Callaghan for Keane Shorten he's shown what he can do from place balls twice already <laughs> they keep making it harder for him with each free but again given what he's done the first two given the fact that he's had he has a fairly stiff breeze within his advantage it's a chance he may may well get it, it, it's a third one in in terms of angle from the goal in the exact same position but the distance is getting longer it's it's the, it's the furthest out of the three now he's i suppose he's a f- good five yards you must remember Jer Ryan almost got cut the last one so this this will be very interesting he needs to get more purchase on this one the, the last one just got over the bar it's short and once more he's definitely got more purchase he's had more a better connection with that than any of the previous two and Raquel now into three points to one lead over Galbally in this intermediate football championship final brought to you on sportingnimerick.com 12 minutes played Matt and you have to be impressed by Raquel's start yeah <coughs> very impressed um, they're, 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 um, they're, 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 they've been very very lively and um, they, they, they have been sure footed with their passing and well able, well able to keep ball and like Galbally aren't able to, to um, um, you know, force them into, in, in, into error, and certainly in terms of physicality, you would have to say it's it's advantage Galbally. But I suppose in the wide spaces of, of, of the the Gaelic grounds, young fresh legs like this, and young fellas full of running, and this is what Raquel have, and they are full of running. Um, the trick will be to, to maintain it for 60 minutes. Indeed, it will. As Galbally on the attack here, it's going to be a foul on John Kearns maybe 50 metres from goal it's going to be taken quickly it's a poor enough pass though and Raquel come away with the ball through Jack Hennessy Hennessy has options he gives it inside to Adam Shanner it's going to go all the way back to Johnny Mooney as a restart in the attack with Barry Coleman here taking the ball inside his own 14 metre line he's got up to the 45 metre line without any challenge whatsoever it's Galbally funnel back and here comes Patrick Wilmot again we've already mentioned Wilmot in commentary a number of times already he's seen a lot of the ball here in the opening 13 minutes of this final and it's got Rat Keel over the far side with Andrew White perfectly happy to take his time with his build up and move the ball eventually but it's, it's a ball in eventually but it's straight down the throat of a Galbally de- defender and it's Galbally come away with it now but under pressure from Rat Keel, but it's Galbally it's Ono Donald's pass in that time attempted ball into Keen Shorten but it's Galbally will come away with James Ryan now gives it out to his midfield partner that's David Cusson Cusson on the run now and it's up up and said to Mark Quinlan Quinlan with the ball doesn't have any options in front of him this Quinlan so he's going to have to go it alone he's doing a good job of it under pressure from Ono Donald so far it's Quinlan eventually with the shot that's gone very very well to the left and very much wide Matt and fairly indicative of the first few minutes here the opening quarter where Mark Quinlan made a good run but he's zero options in front of him. No, that's exactly it, John. And no options. Contrast that with Raquel. When when there's a player on the run, there, there's 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 sometimes one, two, and three showing, and there's 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 a player very very often on on on, on the shoulder. Mark Quinlan was left with no choice whatsoever but to kick from distance, kick from an awkward angle. And you know he spectacularly missed, but no fault to the guy. Um, it, it, it was that we have something a threat here for Galbally. We do indeed. It's a goal chance. Here's a brilliant goal from John Kearns. In fact, it's James Cummins with the goal. I think Matt is it. It's, it's hard to see the Galbally numbers. We'll just confirm that. It looks like James Cummins from here at the moment. We'll check that in a second. Either way, it was a quick free taken by Galbally. Ball worked into Cummins, and Cummins turned his man. Beautiful left-footed shot into the corner, Matt. That's just the Philip that Galbally needed. That that is that is the Philip, and this is what they did in the semi-final as well. They went down and got an early goal, and 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 they rocked um, Palace Green. It now looks that that, that um, the initiative has and the momentum has swung very much with Galbally. Of course, the, the, can they can they drive on now? But certainly, Raquel looked for for a moment or two that, as if they're rocked by by the goal. It's James Ryan now on the attack for Galbally. Ryan now. Eventually brought back for a free. Referee Jason Mullins playing advantage. 
But Matt, it's, it's, it's a great fill-up, as we mentioned, for Galilee. A badly needed one, as there'll be a break in play here now. A couple of players injured, and one of them is Jerk Quinlan from the Galilee side. Seems to be holding a shoulder, but up to that moment, Raquel had been dominating. That goal came from absolutely nowhere. It came from absolutely nothing, and, and uh, uh, Raquel were playing all the football. They were putting all the good moves together, and we had just been critical of, of, of Mark Quinlan not having options and um, suddenly now there's a spring in Galbally step they have g- g- gone back down um, uh, what they didn't do for the first quarter of an hour um, Raquel, they fumbled in, 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 that, in, in that particular situation and now we have a Galbally free now it's a difficult free into the wind um, Gary McCarthy is a very very accomplished free taker um, and a lot of experience um, right up through the edges uh, as a free taker but this one, John, is from distance and it's into the breeze. He's decided to take it short, as Matt was saying there. It's back to McCarthy again here. Ch- shooting chance. He's trying to get one for himself. Eventually leaves the ball off. It's Galbley now going to be patient with it. In fact, they don't. It's a fairly aimless effort in the end from Jamie Morrissey. Needless chance there. If Galbley should have been more patient with it. Either way, it's Raquel coming away with the ball. It's Adam Shanner has a man in space over on that far side. And it's going to be Andrew White trying to launch another attack here for Raquel, White decides to come in field and he finds Patrick Wilmot, Wilmot now just around midfield and they come all the way over to this right hand side it's Patrick Sheehan of course went off five or six minutes ago with a blood sub was replaced by Dean Moan but as you can see he's back on the field as again Wilmot works the ball out to Andrew White and over the far side again here from a Raquel point of view it's full back Podrick Powers come out of that position it's the Owen O'Donnell O'Donnell with a shooting chance it's a very tricky angle for Owen O'Donnell but that's a fantastic score and we're all square here again in the Gaelic rounds Galbally 1-1 and Raquel 4 points Matt stunning score from Owen O'Donnell an excellent score and I, I suppose in terms of the goal they conceded it, it, it's, an, it's an excellent response and, 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 and Raquel will, will, will be delighted with it he just looked up and he, he judged it to perfection and of course he, he, he had the breeze in his favour but you know he still had a bit of work to do what was it it was possibly 35 metres out way out on the left but for a right footed kicker he, 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 he certainly nailed it kick out there from Joe Ryan in the Galbally goal but it's again it's Ratkeel coming out with it free award to them in this occasion it's going to be taken quickly by Barry Coleman Coleman looking for Keane Shorten chance inside Shorten is hit late referee Mullins plays away as Galbally that will eventually come out with it all square here in the Gaelic Crowns 18 and a half minutes nearly played of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final brought to you on SportingLimerick.com it's Galbally now trying to move the ball forward Good turn there from cornerback Tom Davern, captain in this Galbally side. Comes into James Ryan, out of vastly experienced James Ryan. And it's going to be another attack. Good run from Mark Quinlan. We've seen him do this already tonight. That's Quinlan on the run once again. The last time he went up, he's no options in front of him. This time he's two or three players ahead of him. But Quinlan still goes under pressure from Darrow O'Grady, wearing number 20 in the Raquel side. Has to come back to James Ryan does Quinlan and Ryan brings it over the left hand side here to Liam Casey the centre back for Galbally Casey looking to take off and run he's a bit of space for Casey to run to shooting opportunity for Liam Casey and that's a superb score from Liam Casey very good build up in fact it's gone to the right and wide it looked for all the money from our angle in the commentary box Matt O'Callan that had gone over the bar but uh, it's been waved to the left and wide I, 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 I thought it had actually gone over the bar and I'd say Liam Casey thought it had gone over the bar because he had that satisfied look about him when he, when, when, when he turned away but um, it's John Hurley that, that's the umpire down there and John is an experienced official and um, like um, it, it obviously was wide it's actually hard to judge it um, it's hard to judge it from, from the angle judge it with certainty from the angle I think this this free now is after being moved forward, possibly for verbals. It seems to have been. It's going to be another chance. Raquel kind of deciding what they're going to do. It's going to be taken short either way. Barry Coleman giving the ball all the way out to Andrew White. In fact, it's not Andrew White. Sorry, it's Podrick Power moving forward again into Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell just put over a superb score and he's looking dangerous again here. O'Donnell fashions himself a shooting chance. Another effort from O'Donnell. This one definitely looks to be good again. It's another fine score from Owen O'Donnell on the Raquel side. Galbally had been warned just moments ago about his shooting ability and Matt, they didn't take heed of that warning. 
No, it's it's one two from Arna Donnell. They were essentially both both were in, in ex- practically exactly the same position. It it, it, it was a copy book, but certainly um, the players around him got the ball to him, and like th- th- that's terribly important as we saw in the senior final on Sunday uh, when Bally Landers were able to get the ball to the finishers in the first half. It it it, it, it paid dividends, and certainly. Um, it, that, that is what Red Keel are doing at the moment but they are two excellent points by Owen O'Donnell of course Owen O'Donnell is a survivor from the 2013 side um, he was a very young player at that stage and he, uh, he obviously now has gathered a lot of experience since it's Mark Quinlan with an attempted shot there for Galbally it's brilliantly blocked down by Adam Shanner but it's Galbally still on the attack it's worked all the way back to Liam Casey Red Keel be wary of him after the last run he made right through the middle of their defence the end of the shot went wide, but either way, it's Galbally on the attack again, and it's James Cummins' effort. It was a very well missed hit. It was a very poor enough shot. It nearly fell to Galbally full forward, man. On that occasion, it was Jerk Winlin who looked to be getting towards the ball. Didn't make it, Matt. And it was a poor enough effort of a shot. Nearly broke from. Would have been a goal chance. As Rack Keel come back, we'll get back to Matt O'Callaghan in a couple of moments after his attack. Patrick Sheehan with the ball, moving it forward along this right-hand side here. As Racky look to, to add to their lead, they currently lead five points to 1 1. It's Patrick Wilmot who, who on, on possession for Racky, it's given to his captain Patrick Sheen. They worked the ball back out to Owen Kelly and it's going to come all the way to this left hand side. It's worked, paid dividends the last couple of attacks. It's Podrick Power with it. Power gives it into Shorten. Tightly marked, but Shorten loses his footing, manages to keep onto the ball, gives the ball, eventually comes back to Andrew White. Shooting chance for Andrew White. It's a high one from Andrew White, but it's a good one again. And Rakeel going to a six points to 1-1 one, one lead, Matt, with 22 minutes played here. We'll just go back to that score in a moment, but Matt, you wanted to say something about that, that last Galbally attack. He just bore out what, what we had said earlier, that when James Cummins was in possession there, that was the only option that, 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 that was really on. And it nearly came off. Had, had he not undercooked it, um, certainly Rakeel were going to be in trouble they were exposed because he had got in and they just got a hand to it to, to deflect it away but again that's an excellent point and that's three in a row first class top quality points from, from the Rakeel forwards Andrew White played a lot of very experienced player young player but a um, very experienced player at underage level and Mark Quinlan on the run here for Galbally, but his hand pass, his runs are causing problems, just his finishing at times, would it be a pass or a shot, is just letting him down a little bit, as Rakeel come away again, it's Barry Coleman with possession, under pressure from David Cusson, Coleman manages to give it inside, and it's Paul Sheehan, the Rakeel captain who has possession now, they're going to work it out this left hand side again, and it's Andrew White to Wilmot, Wilmot O'Donnell on his outside, but Wilmot decides to hold on to the ball on this occasion, he gives it back inside to Andrew White. White, looking at his options, decides to give it long. He finds Keane Shorten with that long delivery. Shorten with a shooting chance. He decides to give it across. A goal chance, maybe. But there was a chance if Owen Kelly was able to get possession, but he was brilliantly, brilliantly intercepted. And I think that's John Kearns all the way back there, Matt. And it's Galbally coming away with the ball again. Indeed, it was John Kearns. And it's Galbally on the attack. And it's... Jerk Quillen with possession for them. He manages to give it off and then takes it back again. And eventually comes the Cousin. Then back again to Jerk Quinlan. Good defending from Rakeel. They're stopping that attack. That at movement. Done well to stop on that occasion. It's Jamie Morrissey now for Galbally. Up against Patrick Sheehan, the Rakeel captain. Morrissey with not many options. It's been a feature of this first half from a Galbally point of view. Not many options in attack. Certainly not enough. Comes all the way back to David Cousin. Cousin looks for Cummins on his right shoulder. And it's Cummins on the run. James Cummins now with the ball. In fact, that's Michal Donovan, Michael Donovan with the ball. As Matt O'Callaghan mentioned earlier, it's very difficult to see the numbers on these Galbally jerseys, but we're doing our best from the commentary box at the moment. Mark Quinlan, that's certainly Mark Quinlan with the ball. We've seen him run tirelessly in this opening 24, nearly 25 minutes. Gives the ball off to James Ryan. Ryan now with a chance. Man on his out, out on his right-hand side. It's not the best of passes from James Ryan. There's still a shooting opportunity. It's a good touch. Chance comes back out to James Ryan. Shooting chance for James Ryan. It's a decent enough angle for James Ryan, but it's tailed to the right and wide. And Matt, it was a very patient build-up from Galbally, but ultimately it was fine defending from Rakeel in the end. That put, put the shooting man under pressure. It had to be, it had to be patient, and, and the shooting man had to be under pressure because for that entire passage of play, there were no fewer than 13 
rack keel players behind, well, inside their own 65 and, 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 and working on the defensive strategy. They're, they're defending on numbers. Now, that can be a high risk strategy in that it can, it can be energy sapping, but it's certainly frustrating the Galbally forward so far. Another chance for Rakeel as Matt's describing that last Galbally attack. It's gone to the left and wide, and great chance for Owen O'Donnell to score his third point of the game. Initially, it was a great catch from Barry Coleman from Johnny Mooney's kick out. Great run after the catch from Coleman, laid it inside to O'Donnell, but O'Donnell surprisingly, given the fact that it was straight in front of the goals, and especially given the fact that he'd scored two from dip more difficult angles before that, as Galbally come on the attack once more. It's Michael Donovan on the attack for them, down that right-hand side, faced by Barry Coleman. As Rakiel funnel back once more. It's Donovan on the run. Donovan now faced by two Rakiel defenders and not for the first time. As Matt O'Callaghan just pointed out, it's Rakiel come away with the ball. And it's been a feature of the game this opening 26 and a half minutes. Their ability to counter attack. It's Kevin Shanahan with the ball from Rakiel. He's the man who lays it off to Andrew White. White now plays the ball down looking for own Kelly, but it's Galbally come away with it. And it's James Ryan gives it to Casey. Jack Liam Casey coming away with the ball for Gadley, gives the ball out to Tom Daver, comes all the way back to James Ryan, Ryan hand pass into Mark Quinlan, Quinlan as we've seen, as we've mentioned, is only too happy to run with the ball in hand, he's under pressure there, he's definitely been pulled back by Mikey Morrissey on that occasion, it's going to be a free to Gadley, Matt, and Mark Quinlan, to be fair to him, has done a serious amount of running in this first half. Mark Quinlan has, and th this is a guy that played 60 minutes for Gareth Blan on, on Saturday in, 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 in the county final. Um, but Raquel, are, we spoke about him being patient up front. They're patient at the back because they have numbers at the back, and they're, they're, what, what they're hoping, of course, and what they're succeeding to do is, is, is force the turnover and break its speed because they, they have speed, speedsters um, who, who, who can hurt Galbally, and they're, they're drawn Galbally with, with him now. Gary McCarthy has this one sent. Wide. It's a good chance for Gary McCarthy. It was a tough one into the breeze, though it has to be said, and that's just tail to the right. He put it fairly high up into the air on that occasion, but it's another missed chance for Galbally. And with nearly 28 minutes played, it's Rakeel leading them six points to 1 1 in this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final. Brought to you live on sportinglimerick.com from the Gaelic grounds as Johnny Mooney gets play underway with a kick out that reaches his own 65 yard line. It's 65 meter lines. John Kearns who got a hand to it, he fisted the ball, hoping it would fall to one of his teammates. It hasn't. It's gone over the near the Mackey stand sideline here in the Gaelic grounds. It's going to be Shane Horrigan to take that. It's a good ball across from Shane Horrigan, but a nearly lost possession, but they managed to hold on to it through Barry Coleman. Coleman then back to Patrick Sheen. It's been a feature of Rakeel's play. They're very, very happy to move the ball from left to right or right to left, whatever it takes their fancy at the time. As Adam Shanahan now gives it back to his, his full-back, Padraig Power, Power has Andrew White outside him. He decides to go along with it down the line in the first instance. He eventually gives it back to Andrew White. And again, they'll work it across the field. Darrow O'Grady is his option over on this side. It's a beautiful pass to Darrow O'Grady. O'Grady, big man, beats John Kearns with ease. And again gives it into Shane Horrigan. Shane Horrigan is fouled. Clear foul from Liam Casey. His arms around his hips. And it's going to be one minute of added time here. We've 29 minutes played, so there's two minutes left in this first half. Keen Shorten's coming all the way out to take this one. It's going to be an attempt from, from 45 metres. Jason Mullins has brought that free forward again, maybe, as Matt mentioned earlier, for a bit of verbals. In fact, he hasn't. It's Keen Shorten was trying to get a couple of metres, I think, Matt. In the end, it's going to be Shorten. He was looking to give it back 20, 25 metres back to Barry Coleman, who was let lingering around midfield there it's going to be shortened from the ground though the first three frees he's hit in this game have been from his hands it's a fair old distance 50 meters even with the aid of a strong breeze here in the gaelic grounds it's keen shorten now looking to extend rack lead to three points it's a fine strike from shorten and it's a fantastically struck free from keen shorten his fourth free of the game matt and we've mentioned each time he's lined up a free it gets harder each time i know this one was a 40 or a from 50 odd metres, Matt, and that's a cracking free. That was a cracking free, and un unusually, which you, you, you see rarely these days, is it, it, it was kicked off the ground, but kicked off the ground with precision. I have a sense that, that John Fahey, the, the, the Galbally manager here, and his coach, John Dunnigan, they just can't wait to get their lads in because, because 
they, 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 they whole they, they, they haven't established any sort of a pattern of any any type of consistent pattern or they haven't found any sense of rhythm um, in, in the game so far and I, I suppose the scoreboard doesn't lie um, because if you extrapolate the goal out of it um, Rakil would have been in a much 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 stronger position but, but goals count and goals win, win, win matches but certainly apart from that goal they, they haven't threatened to the extent it's another long range attempt here from Galbally and it's another attempt that's gone to the left and wide and again it's fantastic defending from Rakil it has to be said who have a couple of men down now Patrick Wilmot who's been very influential certainly from a ball carrying point of view in this first half as Jason Mullins calls a halt to this opening half of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final here in the Gaelic grounds it's Rakil leading Galbally 7 points to 1-1 one, one. Matt O'Callaghan where do where do back into this game well the, the, it's only three points it, it, it's very doable it's it, it it's very manageable but i'm not so sure that it is that manageable with the way they have played they have found no level of consistency at all through the game and as i was saying to you there towards the end of commentary if we extrapolate the goal out of it um you know it's, it, it, it would be seven points to one all right it's seven points to four and I suppose it's fair to say that that does it fully reflect um, uh, the type of play and um, the approach of, of Rakil? I would say it doesn't. Um, I, I, I would think that Galway can count themselves somewhat fortunate to be within three points of 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 um, Rakil on, on what we have seen in the first half. No, there was a strong breeze there, and Rakil particularly as the half wore on, funneled back in greater and greater numbers and Galbally were becoming frustrated. And, and, and I think we, we highlighted it a, a couple of times dur during the commentary that um, the player in possession, the Galbally player in possession, had very few, or in some cases, no option. And um, like we saw it a couple of times and it, totally unlike what, what we're seeing here with, 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 with Red Keel, where, where they have their runners, where they have, where they have the free man, the ball carrier, and, and the man in possession can look up. Sometimes there are more than one, there are two, there are three options. Um, now, the, the, this is, it, 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 it's a high intensity strategy that, <clears throat> that Red Keel are bringing to the game. I suppose in many ways, it, it's an ideal evening for it ground conditions are perfect the prevailing climate is cool so like <clears throat> you, you would be able to sustain it um, what I feel about it is <clears throat> we've seen 31 32 minutes of play and normally in every half a team gets gets their period on top I'd say you, you could say in that first half Galpley weren't on top for no more than three or four minutes which was around the time of the goal and immediately afterwards and like the, there were signs that they were, they were breaking Rakeel's grip in the game but certainly Rakeel found their rhythm very very quickly again which is a good sign of a team mind you and and um, I, I think Galbally have a lot a lot of work to do in the second half it's doable I'm just looking there at their bench um, I'm, I'm just wondering Will, will they be tempted to make changes and, and, and what changes might they make could we see Kieran Hickey in, in, in the second half could we see Cahal Shanahan in, 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 in the second half but looking at the configuration of, of, of the um, of, of the Galbally team all the defence apart from Mark Quinlan are the most experienced players in it and of course James Ryan James Ryan is a very very experienced with, with, with another young player David Cusson but apart, apart from John Kearns the forwards are youngsters and um, uh, I, I, I'm just wondering um, do, you, do they need to bring in a seasoned head up there because um, we, we saw him running into blind alleys running out of options in, in the first half do they need to bring in somebody to steady it down? And like, as I said, I, I, I would be thinking of somebody like Kieran Hickey, 
or possibly Jack Donovan bring him into the edge of the square and, and, and put the ball in there he's quite capable of causing a lot of problems or um, do they go for an experienced another experienced head like Owen Burke I don't know. Galbley have a lot of th- a lot of thinking to do. Ger Fahey and his, his coach, um, John Dunigan. John, John Dunigan is a Corkman uh, from Mitchellstown, a very very experienced coach um, who dipped his toes in the English league at one stage as a goalkeeper, um, but is is a, is a very renowned coach and 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 has a track record uh, uh, as a coach. They, they learn their keep over the next 10 minutes to come up with a plan to counteract that deal. As Matt O'Callaghan from the Weekly Observer, uh, Weekly Observer Veil Star said, it's all Rakil in that first half and Galbley with it all to do. We'll be back for the second half shortly. Welcome back to the Gaelic Grounds for the second half of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final between Rakil and Galbley. It's Rakil leading at half time, seven points to 1-1. One, one. That goal coming from Michael Donovan from Galbally point of view. It's Raquel at her dominant over as Galbally as we prepare to start this second second half at referee Jason Mullins. Waiting for every day, everyone getting back into position. Playing with the advantage of this strong breeze in the second half. And Matt O'Callaghan, we were mentioning there at halftime. And discussing different things. You mentioned it there in your post-first half talk that... Galbally need to do something. Doesn't appear that they've made a substitution as of yet. Willing to go with the 15 that started the game. But if things don't go right, they'll have to introduce someone fairly quickly. Yeah, well, they, they, they seem to be placing Mike Donovan at midfield this year um, for this half, which like, is a position in which he has played an awful lot of football and, and has has been very effective there. So he's there with James Ryan. So, like... That, that, they're going to be pretty strong in that area but that position players tend to get drawn out of it all the time now it's it's not as effective as it used to be or as important as it used to be but we have a chance here for for Raquel it's gone wide yeah it was um, Kevin Shanahan's ball in ball across it was kind of a half ball in looking for Keane Shorten and a half shot but either way it's going to be Joe Ryan for Galbally Galbally goalkeeper to take this kick out Galbally trailing by seven points. Akil, sorry, leading seven points to 1 1. And Ryan, with the aid of a strong breeze, as we've already mentioned, heading into the city end here in the Gaelic grounds. Ryan with a kick out that's going to bring it just around his own 65 meter line. And John Kearns with a fantastic catch, then wins a free. It's on O'Donnell with the foul. It's going to be taken by Liam Casey. Liam Casey looking to do it quickly, finds James Ryan. Ryan now with a long balling quicker delivery into the full forward line it's Gary McCarthy with possession chance here for Galbley eventually the shot comes off it's going to tail to the left and while it's not the best of efforts it was Jamie Morrissey with that shot in fact not it wasn't it was James Cummins with the shot and Matt a needless attempt from James Cummins never looked like scoring that one again again John where were the options like the build up play James Ryan worked it well Gary McCarthy knocked it back into the path of James Cummins. James Cummins was left with nobody available. Indeed he was, and it's Galbley on the attack again. This time it's Jerk Quinlan with the ball. Quinlan now assessing his options, looking to leave the ball off. Eventually gives it to Michael Donovan, who got that Galbley goal in the first half. As Raquel bringing as many men back as they can, but it's good possession this time from Galbley, but each time a Galbley man catches a ball inside the 45 metre line, he's met with two Rackiel defenders, very good defending from last season's side that were relegated from the Senior Football Championship, as Galbley have to be patient in their build-up, they're going to have to work it across again, you'd imagine, they're looking for an opening, but there's none forthcoming so far, there's a good, good play here on this occasion, another long range attempt, from Galbley, it's well blocked down by Raquel. Galbley lucky to hold on to possession. It's Liam Casey with the ball to Donovan now. Donovan, try, will he take off? Try and use the speed and attack this Raquel side. That's exactly what it does. It's Donovan with the shot. But once again, that's going to go to the left and wide. And on that occasion, Matt, he had three men inside him in the full forward line. He opted to take on his man, Michael Donovan, this time again, I should say. It's gone to the left and wide. Yeah, Galbally will be will be very very disappointed. They have the first two wides of the second half. Um, certainly, 
that that was one that in normal circumstances should go over and it, it, it was one that they certainly badly needed now they're, they're, they're getting a small bit on top around the middle but again there are 13 right heel players inside their, inside their own pot inside their own 65 like um, like they're, 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 they're defending in absolute packs and you, you flagged it there while ago any time that a player gets inside the 45 he, he, he's met with two blue shots um, I like to, now Joe Ryan is coming up and yeah, it, it, it looks to me as if this Jack Dunneman is getting ready yes Joe Ryan coming up to take this long range free for Galbally James Ryan had possession he had a long range shot open for the best but knew he had an advantage it's going to be Joe Ryan to take this one for Galbally midway between the rack heel 45 and 65 it's Ryan it's a pretty good strike from Ryan it's going to drop short though. the ball nearly comes over it's going to go off for a 45 Ryan, is, Ryan was racing back to his goals he's going to be called upon again to take this meanwhile Galbally as Matt said are preparing to introduce Jack Donovan he's going to come onto the field now it's going to be Jamie Morrissey that's going to exit the fray Jamie Morrissey of course is the only scorer well, he's not the only scorer he's the only point scorer for Galbally today that point came fairly early in this game Marcy has struggled to get involved in the game since that moment, of course. In the early stages of this second half, he had a shot on goal. He has been, but the looks of him as he comes close, he's very heavily strapped around the hamstring area and was limping off, so maybe it's an injury that's seen Jamie Morrissey's time today. Call the show It's Joe Ryan taking this one. This is a much better strike again from Joe Ryan. And that's Galbley on the board for the second half. Only their second, half, second point of this game game 35 minutes played of it five minutes of the second half Raquel's lead now down to two points seven points to one two yeah no, they, uh, it'll be a relief to Galbally to get off the mark they, they're probably uh, probably going to decide now instead of working the ball through although I don't see Jack Donovan he normally takes up his position right on the fringe of the square he, he seems to be out, out, out on the left here um, I was suspecting a change of, of approach here that they would loft it in on, on, on top of, of, of Jack Donovan, although he, 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 he certainly is going to be going in full forward. It's Raquel on the attack, win the free, and it's own Kelly in possession now. Kelly gives it in to Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell, two points in the first half, finds one of his midfield partners. On this occasion, it's Mikey Marcy. Marcy is blocked down. Now it's Galbally going to come away with possession here. And it's Mark Quinlan. Quinlan in possession. He's got a couple of options. He decides to give it to Michael Donovan. Donovan looks to be held back. No free given. Raquel in possession again. It has to be said it was a poor enough hand pass from Donovan. And now it's Andrew White in possession. A lovely ball into Keen Shorten. Shorten being marked by two men. One of the men is corner back Frank Cusson. But it's going to be a free. Galbally supporters and management not overly happy with the decision. It was a combination of John Kearns and Frank Cusson. According to referee Jason Mullins that fouled Keen Shorten. It's going to be another chance for Keane Shorn to add to his four points that he's already scored. All of his scores so far coming from f place balls. Each one of them, Matt, he hasn't had an easy free yet to date in this game. But judging by what we've seen from him so far, this is one at this stage the way he's playing we'd expect him to get. The minute I saw the award that I felt that he was going to put it in the ground and he has done just that he thought for a minute about kicking it out of his hand but he, 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 it's that type of free that you could get greater accuracy from putting it on the ground and it'll be very interesting to see the outcome of it it's short now with a fine strike it's a low enough one but it goes over the bar and that's all that matters that's Keane Shorten's fifth point of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final it puts Raquel into an 8 points to 1-2 lead restores their 3 point advantage and what with 37 minutes played of this game it's Raquel back into a 3 point lead as Joe Ryan takes a short kick out to Owen Halligan Halligan now has Michael Donovan outside him that's Donovan who takes possession at the second attempt gives it inside to James Ryan with a hand pass and Ryan looks to take on Shanahan and Shanahan I should say it's James Ryan against Shanahan again and Ryan jinking off his right and left feet eventually forced to give the ball back to Mark Quinlan under pressure from from Keane Shorten on that occasion again as Matt O'Callaghan is pointing out to me it's Raquel as you'll see on camera funneling 13 men behind the ball it's been a feature of the game so far this is a good run from John Kearns but it's a poor shot from John Kearns and it undid all the good work from that run his run pierced through the Raquel defence but he kind of rushed the shot in that and it's cool heads that Galbally need to try and bring this three point lead back 
And that wasn't a cool head from John Kearns on that occasion. No, and, and, and there, there were one or two options there on this occasion, and we've criticised them in the past um, for, for no options being available. But certainly that, that, that was a rushed shot, shot. But you're right, he literally carved through the, through the defence, and you, you just wonder, could he have gone a little further? And, and had he, you know, it, it, was, it was spelling danger. Scalbley with possession once more and it's Kearns again he's looking for a free Jason Kearns isn't buying it on this occasion and Scalbley now under pressure again it's Jerk Quinlan with the ball he's forced to go back to Liam Casey who again in turn leaves the ball off to James Ryan Ryan pushes Patrick Wilmot aside and Ryan on the run now from Galbley he'll be looking to have a greater influence as this second half goes on James Ryan eventually leaves the ball off and it's Gary McCarthy with a shot a shot from well over 45 metres even with the aid of a breeze and it's Rakeel coming away. It was Owen O'Donnell who got the block in. It's Owen O'Donnell on the run here. Gives it inside to Owen Kelly. Kelly gets possession at the second attempt. Kelly on the run now. A couple of Galbally challenges beaten. He gives the ball off to Barry Coleman. Coleman now shooting opportunity. Decides to give it to Owen O'Donnell. There's a chance on here. Shorten. Acute angle for Keane Shorten. Can he put it over? The answer to that is no. The angle was too tight. But Matt, another feature of Rakeel, they've looked so dangerous on the counter-attack. They funnel 13 men back behind the ball with each Galbally attack. But they're, they're, as you've mentioned in commentary in the first half, in the first half, a young team, they have the legs to burst forward at every single opportunity. Yeah, and, they, and, and they burst forward in, in, in numbers. And, and as I said at half-time, they're going in against the more experienced, more experienced and the more seasoned players on, on the... Um, the um, Gal- Galbally team and it, it looks to me that Gal- or, sorry, Radkeel are, are, are about to bring in Owen O'Connor which could be very 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 significant Owen O'Connor one of their star players over the last number of years an ace free taker as well Matt as you know but it's going to be a free back of play just outside the 45 metre line here for Galbally and it's, it's Owen O'Connor as we said about to come into the fray for Radkeel He's going to be coming on for it's Andrew White, which is a, an interesting one, Matt. Andrew White coming off the field for Rakeel. We'll get your thoughts on that in a moment. As Galbally lined this free up from with the angle nearly 50 metres for Michael Donovan. Donovan's going to leave it for Ger Ryan, but Matt, just very quickly, Owen O'Connor for Andrew White. It's experience for experience. It is. It is. Um, it, it, it's real experience. And, of course, like th- there's no doubt about it, John, but... Owen O'Connor is, is one of the finest Gaelic footballers that this county has produced for, 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 for quite a while. And um, like, Owen O'Connor was very instrumental in the early part of this campaign in, 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 in bringing Rat Keel this far. I, I, I was surprised when I saw the team sheet and he wasn't on it. That, oh, that was a fabulous kick by, by um, Ger Ryan. And while it didn't, it didn't get over the bar, it forced the defender to punch it, and I, I, I'm not so sure was he pun- he was trying to punch it to safety, but it, it, it went over the bar, and um, uh, I suppose it, it certainly was a probing ball. Had somebody like Jack Donovan got a, a fist to it in there, it could have gone anywhere. Indeed, it could have. As Racky win the free, it was a huge strike from Jaron. Great effort from him, and it reduces. Rakeel's lead to two points once again in this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final in the Gaelic Grounds. Brought to you on SportingLimerick.com, our fourth county final in four days. Live streamed on SportingLimerick.com as Rakeel now in possession with Patrick Wilmot. Wilmot, industrious as ever today as Wilmot has seen a lot of ball throughout the opening 42 minutes of this game. It's Wilmot again. Three different Galbally pairs in pos- trying to dispossess him of the ball and in the end it's own Halligan that's been blown up for Matt it has to be said a blatant push and it'll be Ratke now who'll slow everything down it's Wilmot who looks to be taking the free himself he's got Owen O'Connor alongside him, but he goes all the way back 30-40 metre pass all the way back to his wing back and it's Adam Shanher with possession Shanher now giving the ball across to Patrick Sheehan the captain of this Ratke team up to Owen O'Donnell O'Donnell scored two points as we've already mentioned back to Sheehan she, you know, another build-up. It's been a key feature of Rakeel's play throughout this game. Slow build-up, but when they need to inject face, they do. And here they go. It's a poor pass though from Wilmot. That's well intercepted. And it's Cusson comes away with it. Gives the ball back. And it's Gadley on the attack. It was James Cummins at this stage. Now into Gary McCarthy. But once again, he's swarmed around by a couple of two or three Rakeel defenders. And they're going to have to move the ball quickly. 
quicker than that are Galbally. It's Cummins in possession now. Forced to give it back to McCarthy and in, in turn he finds Michael Donovan. It's too slow though from a Galbally point of view as John Kearns looks to bring some pace into it. That Kearns taking on Darrell O'Grady. Kearns loses possession but Galbally should come up with the ball. Indeed they don't. They do eventually. They're looking for a free. This time this time Jason Mullins gives him a free maybe rather soft one Jason saw something that we maybe didn't Matt but either way it's another scoring chance for Galbally and remarkably given Raquel's dominance could only be one point between the sides if they get this one yeah and I, 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 I think Galbally will, will, will be happy with that situation because I, I'd say they'll be forced to admit that they played well Jack uh, didn't play well so far uh, Jack Donovan has just nudged that over the bar with ease and I think Raquel are about to make another substitution down here indeed they are and it's Josh O'Connor who's coming onto the field for Raquel he's coming on for Kevin Shanahan around midfield it's Shanahan who has to be said looked to have picked up an injury in the last couple of minutes he's limping onto, into the dugout anyway here in the Gaelic grounds but what a free first touch from Jack Donovan with absolute ease Matt as you mentioned tap that one over and Galbally now with only one point behind Raquel with 44 and a half minutes played of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship it was Galbally on the attack again with Michael Donovan Donovan now takes on his man has the pace to beat Shannon but a brilliant bit of defending from Barry Coleman this possesses Donovan on the ball and away come Raquel Raquel now on the attack he gives it Donovan or sorry Coleman gives it to Owen O'Connor O'Connor now with three Galbally players around he's managed to wriggle his way through them a fourth defender comes in gets it out of his hand did Mark Quinlan on that occasion but it's Raquel still in possession now it's Darrell O'Grady with the ball O'Grady hand passes it it's going to start to be a patient build up again Owen O'Donnell working it out to the right hand side to Patrick Sheehan he gives it back inside to midfielder Mikey Marcy Marcy it's a good ball up to the man just onto the field and it's Josh O'Connor O'Connor with a shooting chance it's not a great effort from O'Connor it's straight into the hands on the first bounce to Joe Ryan and away come Galbally once more with James Ryan Ryan now with a bit of room to run into, run into. He's got options over in his far side. A superb pass. It should have been caught by Jerk Quinlan. He took his eye off it, but he gives it in long, looking for Jack Donovan. Donovan holds off his man, which is Padraig Power. And Donovan is away. You can see how strong he is. Donovan looking for a second point. Sid's coming onto the field. That one's gone to the left and wide. But, Matt, you've seen straight away here what Galbally need to do to get back into this game. They've brought on Jack Donovan. But one thing in mind purely is to leave him around the edge of the square, give ball into him, he'll hold off any marker. This occasion it went, to the, it went wide, but on other occasions it could, be, could prove more successful. It could, pro it could prove more successful, and he was very, very unlucky at this stage. And as, as I was suspecting, we, we now see Kieran Hickey, and um, he, he has come on for John Cairns. But you would have to say, like John Cairns, and the two lads from Raquel that have come off that have come off, they have left everything out there. No doubt at all about it. And it, it, it is that that um, I, I, I I think it, it, the, the tactic of it from from a Raquel point of view was probably to get even fresher legs in at this stage because certainly the the high intensity and 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 the amount of running game that that these lads have done between funneling back going forward again on the break very very in energy sapping but in just that little cameo there while ago we saw a, a, a glimpse of what Owen O'Connor brings to the team his experience and his football brain, his football nose, like there, there were four Galbally defenders. He succeeded in shielding it from all four and, and getting off a pass. Back with play now. It's going to be a line ball here on this near side in the Gaelic rounds for Galbally. Momentum very much with Galbally at this moment. 17 minutes into the second half. It's going to be a line ball though. And it's going to be taken. It's going to be taken by Frank Cusson on this near sideline on his own 14 metre line. And he gives it to David Cusson, but it's gone out over the end line. A poor error on the Galbally side. It's going to be a line ball for Raquel, who lead by eight points to one four. They're going to be in no rush to take this. They're going to go all the way back. It's Darrell Grady's pass. It goes all the way back to Adam Shanahan. Shanahan now. His options available on either side of him, either forward or back. And then Vendy the gives it to O'Donnell. It's back to Shanahan again. Shane Horgan's calling for the ball quite vociferously, but O'Donnell and Shanner are happy to play the ball between themselves before Owen O'Connor is the man who demands possession. O'Connor now on the run for Raquel. Faced by Liam Casey, O'Connor decides to find the ball into Owen Kelly under pressure from David Cusman. Kelly beats his man. Kelly now 
has four Galbally men around and that should leave someone open indeed it does it's Mikey Marcy that's the open man looks for Owen O'Connor now Owen O'Connor a heavy, hefty enough challenge from on Owen O'Connor there looked like it could have been a free Jason Mullins thinks otherwise either way Galbally come away with the ball and it's James Wright to Kieran Hickey Hickey of course a member of John Kiley's backroom staff that one the, that ended Limerick's 45 year wait for an All-Ireland Hurling Championship that's for another day though it's Galbally on the attack with Mark Quinlan Quinlan now whose runs like this his Maisie runs have been symptomatic of his day so far but also has been the end result it's not the first time he's shot for goal Matt O'Callaghan and it's not the first time he's tailed to the right or left and wide yeah I, th- I think Galbally will be, and will be very very disappointed with that because he, he just didn't look up um, because there, there, there were options available Kieran Hickey was quite near him um, who, who could have taken it and, 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 and held it up um, that, that was a rush a rushed effort now here Galbally back in the attack again indeed they are with James Ryan Ryan now has players outside him is Ryan going to go for it himself and is that the levelling score yes it is we said just five or six minutes ago that James Ryan looked, would look to have a more influential role in this game. He stood up to be counted in the last five or six minutes, Maddox Allen, and that's just evidence of it. A superb score from the vastly experienced dual star in James Ryan. Absolutely, a, a superb score, and it just wasn't five minutes ago. We, we, said, it, we said it before the game that, 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 um, that James Ryan would have a big influence in this like he had in, 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 in the hurling game. But you, you, you must remember that that James Ryan was a very, very, very important member of, of the Limerick Senior football team for a number of years. Like he, he's, he's a very, very accomplished footballer, a very accomplished dual star. But I, I have seen him through the years. The contribution he has been making to Galbally has, has been absolutely phenomenal. And we have seen it in the second half that he, he has controlled a lot of it in, in the second half. And we said it five or six months ago, he was growing and growing and growing into the game. That was an excellent point. Like, and that, 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 that was leadership personified, and he took it by the scruff of the neck, went forward, and he said, lads, this is how you do it. And it's a free to Galbally, and, and despite not hitting the high spots, if Joe Ryan puts this over, Galbally are in the lead with less than 10 minutes to play. Indeed, the air Ryan's already got hit the target once it's going to tail straight away that was tailing to the right and wide though and it looked more mad on that occasion that he rushed that slightly in comparison with other freezes hit but either way it's a let off for Akeel Ryan will trail all the way back to his goalkeeping position now with Johnny Mooney to restart things for Akeel as Matt mentioned 51 minutes on the clock here at the Gaelic grounds in this Limerick Senior in Intermediate Football Championship final I should say brought to you live on sportinglimerick.com it's all square here in the, in the last, in the remaining 10 minutes as a kick out from Johnny Mooney is eventually won by Raquel and Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell finds Patrick Sheehan and it's all the way back to Jack Hennessy. Hennessy plays it to Adam Shanahar. Shanahar now operating around the centre back area all game despite the number seven on his jersey. It's Owen O'Connor. Now the vastly experienced Owen O'Connor who plays the ball across to Barry Coleman. Coleman now on the run. He's got a man outside him. That's Shane Horrigan. Looks to be a foul. Inside known Kelly, it's play away. It's Kelly eventually who gets it for a rebound off Keane Shorten, the intended target of Horrigan's pass, but Shorten's dispossessed. And Galbally have much more urgency about them in the second half, certainly in the defence, and it's Galbally that have won the free. And Mac, just mentioning that, Raquel have definitely found it m- much more difficult to score in the second half, and it's mainly down to the urgency shown by the Galbally defenders. Yeah, that, 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 that is part of it, but um, the high intensity that they had brought, and we said it right early on, it was very, very hard to, 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 to sustain that over, over, over 60 minutes. All right, there's, there's a lot of experience. The, the, the experience in the Galbally team is weighted at the back, and um, in this tight situation, and like... Are we heading for a draw? I uh, ask myself. Or is there going to be a hero? Here is Kieran Hickey holding it up as, as, as we said he would do. Look, uh, until, until the man became available. And it was Hickey that did well to set up. A good bit of play and holding on to the possession until a man came in the shoulder. That man was Michael Donovan. But Donovan shot again, which has been a tail of the tape for Galbally on so many occasions in this game. Was off target. It was a high 
risk shot, if you want to say that. And it's one that didn't come off from a Galbally point of view. It's Johnny Mooney's kick up, but it's Galbally winning it again. It's Liam Casey who picks up the loose ball and gives it to James Ryan. Ryan now finds James Cummins on this near side here in the, Ma oh, the Mackey Sand side of the Gaelic grounds. He finds Kieran Hickey. Hickey's had a huge influence since coming onto the field. Shooting chance now for Kieran Hickey. And that's the lead for Galbally. A stunning score from Kieran Hickey. And maybe a bit of a master stroke from Ger Fahey and his management team in bringing Kieran Hickey on when they did. Matt O'Callaghan mentioned it at halftime. Maybe the likes of Kieran Hickey and Jack Donovan will come on in the second half. They've done exactly that, Matt, and it's a point each for them. And all of a sudden, with 53 and a half minutes played, it's Galway leading Raquel 1 6 to 8 points. Yeah, and um, like we, we did say it at halftime, and, and I felt as the, as, as the first half progressed that, um, th th that that's what the Galway ne game needed because, like, certainly they were rather aimless going forward in, 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 in the first half now. All right, that's not to detract for one minute from the defensive qualities of Red Keel, but it, it is all Galbally now at the moment. And you saw there while ago the way Kieran Hickey held the ball up for Mike Donovan. All right, he ballooned it wide, but you saw Kieran Hickey made the space for himself. He, he's a big man, he's an experienced man, and he slotted it over the bar. And a point, like this game is going to be decided on very, very small margins. Here we go again with big Jack Donovan inside. Big ball in there for Mark Wynn and looking for Donovan. Donovan was not able to get possession of it though despite getting to the ball first and it's Raquel now badly in need of a scorer Raquel with 54 and a half minutes played here in the Gaelic grounds and away they come with Mikey Morrissey it's Morrissey in possession on his left hand side is a man and that man all the way out from half forward is Barry Coleman Coleman out to Owen O'Connor O'Connor most questionably fouled there no doubt despite the protestations of Galbally a blatant hand on his back and it's a man down, it's Liam Casey down in the meantime for Galbally. Casey down here, but it's Raquel. And as we just mentioned, badly in need of a score here. They're trailing Raquel, I'm sorry, trailing Ga Ballingar. Galbally by 1 6 to 8 points, 55 minutes gone. As Galbally are preparing Jack O'Malan, of course, to come into the side, a member of the Gareth Milan panel that won the Premier Intermediate Hurling Championship last Saturday. It's going to be Owen O'Donnell to take this. He takes it short to Owen O'Connor. Owen O'Connor now just inside 40 metres from goal. He leaves the ball off to Patrick Wilmot. Wilmot now surrounded by Galbally defenders. It comes to Owen O'Connor. O'Connor would fancy himself from this area if he didn't have so many Galbally defenders around. He gives a hand pass in. That's brilliantly dispossessed as David Cusson. In the end, it falls out over the end line. It's going to be a sideline ball for Raquel. Great bit of defending there from David Cusson, the Galbally midfielder. Did brilliantly to dispossess Owen O'Donnell of possession just as he was about to snaffle that one, that hand pass from Owen O'Connor. It's going to be O'Donnell to take the sideline ball. And he doesn't have too many options. In the end, he's forced to go for a risky one to Marcy. Marcy does brilliantly. Shooting chance now for Wilmot to level it. It's a high one from Wilmot. It looks to be dropping. It's a good effort, and it's a great catch from Joe Ryan on the goal line. And Ryan has the confidence and composure to find a loose man, and that loose man, it's no surprise to see from Galbally's point of view that it's James Ryan. Ryan inside to Donovan. Donovan, of course, the Galbally goal scorer in that first half, wearing the illuminous boots over on that far side here in the Gaelic grounds. As time ticks away here, and Galbally will be happy enough to hold on to this one point lead. Nearly 57 minutes played of this Limerick Intermediate football final. And Ryan gives it inside his midfield partner, Kevin Cusson. Cusson to the vastly experienced Hickey, and Cusson takes possession once more. Hickey now with the ball again for Galbley. Hickey, again Galbley, just happy to hold on to possession. Matt O'Callaghan, they're in no rush to do anything stupid with it. Yeah, they have the players now on the field that, 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 that can hold up to it in this situation. Like You can see the, the impact that Kieran Hickey ha has, has made that um, once he gets the ball it's so hard to take it off him and he's waiting like the, 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 the pass there from James Ryan was, was absolutely the timing it was abso absolutely perfect and you, you just cannot you, you just cannot buy that kind of experience and um, like the incisiveness that Brett Keel were showing in, 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 in the first half it seems to have deserted them now they have found a loose man and that loose man is Darryl O'Grady so O'Grady with a very difficult shot from that hand side that difficult angle and that one is tailed to the left and wide and Galbley are running, or sorry, I should say Raquel are running out of time. 
as Jack O'Malan comes onto the field for Gary O'Doherty on the Galbally side. And it's another chance. Kevin Shanahan seems to recover from that injury. He's coming in back onto the field for Raquel. He's coming on instead of Owen Kelly. Now Donovan, who started the game in midfield, is going straight into the full forward line for Raquel. We've fit just over 58 minutes played of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final. Brought to you live here from the Gaelic Grounds on SportingLimerick.com as Joe Ryan prepares to take this kick out for Galbally. Ryan will be in no rush to take this one. It's a good strike from Ryan. It'll take us just up to the 65 metre line. But it's Galbally that win possession of the ball. And it's Liam Casey. Casey gives it inside. It's a foul on Joe Quinlan. Foul by Adam Shanahan. And Galbally, as we've mentioned in the last couple of minutes, will be in absolutely no rush to take this whatsoever it's going to be James Ryan with the ball James Ryan will look backwards he gives it a simple pass to Liam Casey there's going to be two minutes of additional time here at the end of this intermediate football championship final as Liam Casey go has possession for Galbally he finds his way back to James Ryan once more Ryan now as Galbally looks to take the clock leave the clock ticked down I should say 59 minutes play so that means there's three minutes for Raquel to get a score that could bring this If Raquel get, it, get that point, we will not have an uh, extra time here tonight. There will be a replay for this final. It's, fi it's fixed for Saturday according to the latest fixture list but with, 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 with Gareth Spillane playing in the Munster Club Championship on, Saturday, on Sunday. I, I, I don't know how that's going to happen but look, the next three minutes is, 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 is going to be it's crucial in, in, in terms of, of um, the, the, the outcome of, of, of this game. And, of course, Galbally will be hoping that it, it, it will not arise, that they will hold on. Uh, he, uh, Frank Kusinova missed that, that ball. He, ha, ha, had he held it, that, there would have been some danger for Raquel. But now is it they, they've turned it around and, and it's, it's Raquel on the attack. Indeed it is, and it's Mikey Morrissey who has the ball. Morrissey does well to hold off a couple of challenges. It's on O'Connor, and that's a needless foul. O'Connor had lost possession of the ball. Galbally have kicked the ball away as well. It's O'Connor. It's going to be a free chance. It may be O'Connor indeed who takes the free himself. Keen Shorten will also want to, something to do with it. But Matt, a needless foul there from Jerk Quinlan. O'Connor had seemed to be losing possession of the ball. And this is a chance with what? 30 seconds of added time played for Raquel to get the equaliser. Yeah, it, it, it is. And there's a yellow card being shown. Um, a needless free. With Owen O'Connor in full flight, 35, 35 metres for goal, may not have been a needless free because if you know if there was one player you wanted to get into that situation and wanted to get you something, Owen O'Connor was the man. It's not going to be Owen O'Connor, it's Keane Shorten who's equally adept as he's shown today from place balls. He scored five from five and this can he make it six to sit from six to level this game? And the pressure seems to have got to Keane Shorten on that occasion. It never looked like it was a good strike from Shorten on this occasion. And it's tailed to the left and right. Even if it had been on target, Joe Ryan was there to take it. And with 1 minute 20 seconds played of this, if added time in this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final, it's Galbally who retained that lead. 1 6 to 8 points they lead. With a minute and a half left, or sorry, 30 seconds left, the kick is out. It's Raquel with possession once more. It's Mikey Morrissey surrounded by, by Galbally players. That is fouled. It's Shane Horrigan trying to take it quickly. And Horrigan is aimlessly kicked out. He's got lucky. But it's a ball across from Patrick Sheen. It's Galbally that have it. And Matt with 10 seconds left in this game. If they just hold on to this ball, the title should be theirs. And return to the senior ranks will be theirs. And it's James Ryan typical fashion from Ryan as he's shown all his career he gives it long may not have been best employed to do that it has bounced over Patrick Power's head and Jack Donovan is onto it for Galbally Donovan now takes on Power shooting chance for Donovan can he copper fasten it it hits the post ball falls to Cusson Cusson with a chance it's Kevin Cusson it's blocked by Raquel but it looks Jason Mullins looks at his watch and that's it Galbally are intermediate football champions for 2018 They've beaten Raquel by a solitary point. They're in Limerick Senior, back into the big time for Galbally. They've got, they'll be back up in the Limerick Senior Football Championship for 2019. They've beaten Raquel here in the Gaelic Grounds, live on SportingLimerick.com. Matt O'Callaghan, 
You have to say in the balance of play in the second half, few could argue with that victory for Galbally. I don't think they could. Um, uh, once they, they, they <coughs> slowly and patiently um, they, they dismantled it. But you, you go back again to James Ryan and we, we, we said it from the outset. What a servant. What a servant to, to Limerick GA and, 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 and to the sport that we love both in hurling and football like he showed it out there again today and um, Gal- yes. Keel will be bitterly bitterly disappointed um, uh, for all their running it was high strategy and they didn't have the same energy level in the second half and we we, 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 we flagged that from 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 early on and and um, Galbally were patient and at, at the back when it came to closing it out as I said to you um, the seasoned players were weighted towards the back and that that was very very important when it came to closing out the game and that it has to be said as well of course what a year for the Galbally club already mentioned in commentary Gareth Spillane going back up to the senior ranks now they're joined by their football counterparts of course in Galbally and of course it has to be mentioned as well a Galbally man leading Limerick in John Kiley to their first All-Ireland hurling title in 45 years it doesn't get much better years than that for a club for two clubs in Gareth Spillane and Galbally and certainly Matt they'll bring something to the senior championship next year in the football and of course the hurling but just as a quick reflection on a year it's been for Galbally and Gareth Spillane. Ah, sure. Look, it's a year that, um, that you, would, you would dream about. And what a contrast in 12 months, um, John. 12 months ago, um, Gareth Spillane and Galbally were licking their wounds after being defeated in two county intermediate finals. And here they are. And I, I, suppose, I suppose it's testimony to the character clubs and indeed to the group of players that they have and even though <coughs> there was only two that started tonight that had started in the county final on, on, on Saturday but there is a substantial crossover if you take the bench and, and, and all into account to this group of players that, that came back and, and, and have, have won both the counties have uh, this year um, Galbally certainly I thought had a poor start to the, to the campaign but we've said it many times, trophies are not given out in April. Simple as. Um, they picked up one point from the first two games. Um, it didn't look good. Um, they drew with Castle Mahan, who were subsequently relegated. They lost to Galty Gales and deservedly lost um, uh, to Galty Gales, who had just been promoted. But they went away and reformed during the summer. And they came back a totally different animal because they, 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 they breezed through it with, with wins over Gerald Griffins, over Mount Collins and over Ratkeel and this is their second win over Ratkeel and very often you, you get a reversal of the results that you would have in, in, in group stages when it comes to the knockout stages but not on this, not on this occasion and I think they, they showed tremendous character um, because let's face it John and you flagged it and I flagged it the first half they were seriously under the cosh no question about that now they were seriously seriously Galbally or Rakeel were running them all were running them all over the place but they dug in there and, and they, they had the people to come off the bench when they needed them I thought um, I thought they would um, have brought them in at half time but I, I, I suppose you know Jarfahi and his backroom team there they they, 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 they had confidence on, 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 on their starting 15 and, and, and they left them out and you w- w- will have to note the contribution of Ger Ryan he went up, he, he kicked two hugely important two hugely important points plus he was rock solid at the back like, uh, uh, like he, he will probably be remembered for his two points but he, he should be remembered for his goalkeeping as well particularly late in the game there when he took down a ball from, from, from under the crossbar and for I suppose the variation of his kick out and it, it was a difficult it, it, the kick out was, was difficult particularly in the first half when he was kicking into the wind and he was kicking into a red keel team that were in top in most areas but um, full, full credit to him but full credit to, to, the, to the gambling management full credit to 
to, to the Galbraith team. They were under the cosh. They withstood it. They came out in the second half and did what they had to do, and which is to win win the county title. And um, uh, as I said, I thought that Jack Donovan and and Kieran Hickey would be introduced um, earlier, but look, they came on. They played their part. Galbraith are champions. Congratulations to them. Commiserations to Ratkeel. No doubt, Ratkeel will have their day, and it it will be sooner rather than later. The thoughts of Matt O'Callaghan of the Weekly Observer Veil Star. My many thanks to Matt for commentary, co-commentary with me today and over the past few weeks as, this, as our season on Sporting Limerick, or GA season, comes to a close here. It's been a cracking final th- this evening in the Gaelic Grounds, the Intermediate Football Championship final. Stay tuned to Sporting Limerick for more over the coming months. We'll be back soon. Thanks for tuning in.